Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We'll just wait a few more seconds. I know it takes a little while for people's computers to connect to the webinar. So hold tight and we will be starting in uh, probably about 20 seconds or 30 seconds while we wait for people to load on. Thanks again for joining us and we'll be starting momentarily. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We're just waiting a few more seconds while people's computers are connecting. I can see our numbers going up now. We just want to give a few seconds to everyone to make sure that they can connect. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. We're just waiting a few more seconds while people connect, and we will go ahead and get started. So just hold on. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We have a few housekeeping items before we start today's program. I'm Andrea Jensen. I'm the Education Specialist for Allergy and Asthma Network. All participants will be on mute for the webinar. We will record today's webinar and post it on our website within a few days. You can also find any of our recorded webinars on our website at allergyasthmanetwork.org. Scroll to the bottom of the page to find our recorded webinars and any upcoming webinars. The webinar will be one hour and we will have time for questions. We will take those questions at the end of the webinar, but you can put your questions in the Q&A tab down at the bottom of your screen on the ribbon there at any time. We have someone monitoring the chat. If you have any questions or need any help, we will get to as many questions as we can before we conclude, can conclude today's webinar. We do not offer CEUs for this particular webinar, but we do offer a certificate of attendance. Some of you may have noticed we are using a different webinar platform this year. Instead of downloading the certificate during the webinar, you will receive an email a few days after the webinar. In that email, which will come from Zoom, you will have a link to download your certificate of attendance, also a link to resources associated with this webinar and a link to the recording. We are also going to try to add the link to the certificate or the, or the certificate itself in the chat. Uh, we know how, all know how technology goes, so we will try to get that in for you. If that doesn't happen, once again, watch for an email within a few days and you will be able to get that. So today we are going to talk about uh, National Sleep Awareness Month and the connection between allergies, asthma, and poor sleep quality. Allergy and Asthma Network is a grassroots organization that was started over 35 years ago by a mom who knew that other moms like her needed resources and support. Our mission is to end the needless death and suffering due to allergies, asthma, and related conditions through outreach, education, advocacy, and research. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Odile Liu, Odile is a head of market, product marketing, Unilever Water and Air Wellness in North America. In her role, Odile oversees the North American product marketing and channel strategy for Blue Air, Unilever's indoor air purification company that boasts more than 25 years of industry experience with a mission to provide clean air for the next generation. With over a decade of professional innovation design, development, and marketing experience, she has led both an array of global and emerging brands across various categories, leading strategic planning, innovation design and development, product launches, business development, and more. She holds a bachelor's degree from Georgetown University and a master's degree from Parsons School of Design and currently resides in New York City. Thank you for being with us today, Odile, as we discuss allergies and asthma and how they can impact sleep. 
Thank you so much, uh, Andrea, and also for the Asthma and Allergy Network for having me here today. And I hope uh, today's webinar will prove to be useful to many of you. Uh, so let me get going. Uh, firstly, just a quick introduction on who we are, what Blue, you know, who Blue Air is, what our brand does. Um, a quick recap of that Andrea mentioned. We, you know, Blue Air is a Swedish air purification uh, company that was founded over 25 years ago when our founder really wanted to bring the Swedish, you know, clean natural air from the Swedish countryside indoors for his children. Uh, since then, he has led and, you know, designed a proprietary HEPA silent technology. And we've been dedicating the last 25 years solely on developing and designing uh, air purification solutions to help bring clean air indoors. Uh, today in the U.S., we are one of the most awarded air purifier brand, um, and you know we have achieved the status through a lot of, of third-party certification and testing. Um, what makes us a little bit different from other air purifier brands is we are very proud of our Swedish heritage. So because of that, a lot of our, our design and part of our DNA is to drive design of the highest quality, highest performing air purifiers that are beautiful while also uh, using less energy to have the lesser impact on our environment. And, and one other factor that makes us different in this category and something that we are truly very proud of is that we you know, strive to be activists in the area when it comes to indoor air quality. And since then, for the last 25 years, we've been fighting for children's right to clean air um, and have delivered a number of um, improvements on over a million children's life across the world through advocacy and also product donations. And most recently in 2021, we also got the UN to acknowledge that clean air is a fundamental right for children. So really bringing indoor air quality and just air quality in general high at the top of the public awareness has been um, our company's um, mission. Quickly, um, you know, general impact uh, recap of where we are today. You know, we've had a very unusual two years, as most of you have known, with very monumental changes to our life and disruptions with COVID and also some of the biggest record-breaking wildfires seen in the U.S. Since those, you know, last two years um, have sort of stabilized or in a way, you know, return to normal, I do think it's important for us to remember that even before all of these very unique outliers happening in our life, there, there was always a really large group of allergy and asthma sufferers that remain critically at need in our country. So there are over 50 million Americans that have been diagnosed with different um, allergies and over half of them have are suffering from seasonal allergy, uh, allergic rhinitis. What this really results and what I think people don't fully recognize is the impact it has on the quality of life. And what this means is that over 3 million workdays are missed per year. And it really is also costing our economy over $8 billion. So the impact of these larger group continues and have maintained pretty stable throughout the years, even the last two years with a lot of heightened awareness around air quality and safety around air, um, indoor air. Um, today, what we would like to share a little bit is about how indoor air quality can really affect your sleep, given this is sleep, um, you know, the month for sleep. And I want to teach and share a little bit of data and insight. So firstly, why is indoor air quality and why is it important? And I think with all of the education we've received the past few years with COVID, this is not so much uh, of a surprise, but you do, you know, we do know now, especially with the EPA's most uh, recent survey and studies, is that indoor air quality can be up to five times more polluted than outdoor air. And this is especially um, significant because as humans, we spend almost roughly 90% of our time indoors. Some of the most common household pollutants are PM 2.5, which is a range of fine particles, dust, pollen, mold allergens, pet dander, obviously bacteria and viruses as we know now, uh, and obviously smoke particles, dust mite, and coking odors are all different allergens and pollutants that can trigger people's allergy and asthma symptoms. 
What this means is because in the indoor space, there is a lack of ventilation, if you don't have the proper intervention, these pollutants essentially sort of build up in your indoor space because air is not static, it's constantly moving. And then it starts building up and leading to irritation. So in the short term, most commonly, you know, people know this sort of different type of irritations of their ear, nose and throat. Some people that are much more sensitive also get dizziness, fatigue and headaches. And those that have you know, true medical conditions will have flare ups with asthma and allerg severe allergic reaction. In the long term, more and more studies are now also pointing to poor indoor air quality and poor quality air quality in general, leading to respiratory diseases, heart diseases, and even cancer. Um, and the population that is most at risk are often the very young, like young children and also older adults as their you know, sort of immune system are a little bit um, reduced. And uh, people with cardiovascular respiratory diseases, of course, are the ones that are most affected. Um, you know, with our dedication on always looking for, you know, the next innovations on air purification solutions, we are constantly looking out and trying to understand how we can find solutions for the American consumers. Uh, and most recently, we conducted a large scale quantitative survey of Americans to sort of understand a little bit more their experiences around air quality and their home, especially in this sort of like towards the end of the COVID era that we've just experienced. And some of the foundings are actually pretty uh, incredible and um, pretty impactful as well. Uh, firstly, air quality really has is perceived as something that impacts the general health of the population. Of the 1,000 Americans we've surveyed, over 97% of them believe that air quality in their home truly impacts their health, both physically and mentally. This is significantly higher than some of what we have seen you know, years before COVID. So this is definitely, I think, part of the reason. Uh, I think part of the reason is also you know, heightened awareness with the most, some of the recent um, you know, external events happening. And then when we ask them how, you know, what exactly, how is air quality sort of like impacting them? The majority of them are all saying is different respiratory sort of conditions, uh, such as coughing, wheezing, and then a really large uh, percent, over 60% of the respondent also said that they believe that air quality or they feel that air quality has actually impacted their sleep quality. So this is definitely something that is also much higher than what we have um, normally seen before. And I think more and more people are actually starting to connect the dots that some of their you know, sleep quality issues are actually coming and stemming from air quality. And when we ask them, uh, you know, what is the percentage of their household members that are suffering from some of these symptoms over, you know, 81% of the Americans have said that somebody in their household or a member of their household have suffered from, uh, you know, air quality, poor air quality. And most commonly, some of the most common symptoms are such as allergic reactions, nasal congestion, coughing and wheezing, headaches, which are often, you know, the common symptoms I've mentioned before, and also poor night's sleep. So really having seen a big percentage of um, Americans being affected by these conditions and impacting their quality of life. And when we ask, um, you know, whether or not people believe that air quality is actually impacting their sleep, yes, the majority actually strongly believe that air quality has something to do with their sleep quality. And this is probably the most uh, disheartening data that we've seen, but uh, you know, 65% of the Americans are woken up at least once during the night due to different respiratory issues, such as an allergic reaction or some sort of asthma symptom. So that is really significant, especially if you look at the number of people that get woken up more than once. That's pretty disheartening to see that so many Americans are suffering. So what we have asked is, you know, now that more and more Americans are connecting the dot that air quality is being impacted, uh, is impacting their sleep, what are the actions, intervention they are naturally taking? Uh, and what was pretty significant and interesting to us is that turning on and using the air purifier has now become one of the top three um, 
sort of behavior changes or sort of actions and interventions a consumer like Americans are seeking to improve their sleep. And not surprising, you know, as I mentioned, some of the most at risk group for poor indoor air quality are children. And it has, if you are somebody like a parent like me, you know that your children is constantly congested, having a runny nose. And it was very surprising for us to see in the survey that parents actually rank air purifiers as the number one sort of intervention they make uh, to improve their children's uh, sleep and also at addition of an equipment into their children's bedroom. So, you know, hearing and sort of really being validated again through the survey results that, you know, air, poor air quality, allergy symptoms and asthma symptoms are really impacting the quality of life of so many Americans. Uh, the following, you know, part of the webinar is really explaining to you a little bit more, how can you help them? So how do we achieve allergy relief with better sleep uh, with an air purifier? So, Going back to just the most basic 101, what exactly is air purification? Uh, as I mentioned, air is not a static, uh, you know, it's not a static material. It is constantly moving. It's constantly infiltrating our home through different nicks and uh, you know, cracks, through HVAC, window gaps, door gaps, um, and then also just the different occupants in a room also changes your air quality. So the air within us indoors is constantly infiltrated with pollutants. And an air purifier essentially is an equipment that targets and removes the contaminants to improve um, the, the indoor air quality. And the functionality of it is super simple. When I first explained to people, people don't believe how, how simple it is. Fundamentally, it basically almost is like a fan. What it does is it has inlets that sucks in the dirty air and then it, it pushes the dirty air with a motor through a filter media. And then that filter media captures because it's very fibrous, it captures a lot of different pollutants and then it pushes out clean air. So just as simple, exactly like how a fan works, except you do have another middle part, which is the filter media that helps capture pollutants. So a quick air purifier 101, like I mentioned, you know, air purifiers are, you know, devices that really help remove pollutants from the air. And because the, the most common indoor air pollutants, such as dust, mold spores, pet dander, smart part, uh, smoke particles, viruses, and bacteria, are often the allergen that also triggers allergic, allergic reaction and asthmatic symptoms. So in order to improve your symptoms and also your overall sleep, by having an air purifier and removing the allergens in your environment is one of the ways to provide an intervention to help reduce uh, these symptoms. And because air is not static, um, it's constantly moving and, you know, uh, coming through the different you know, nooks and crannies of your home, the best way to always ensure clean air uh, in a space is to leave an air purifier on 24 seven so that it's constantly just cleaning the air at all times. And another really important sort of fact is that uh, the air purifier can really only work at its optimal performance when you're cleaning and or replacing the filter media very regularly, because that's the only way that it allows the device to remain effective. You know, if the filter, as it captures more and more uh, pollutants, it will start accumulating more and more sort of clogging on it. So without cleaning it out, you will reduce the airflow of the air purifier and then the performance will drop. So if you've ever had the vacuum cleaner with like a filter, you know, media in the middle and you've cleaned it, you will know this and see how dirty it is. That's exactly the same thing when it comes to an air purifier. That's why replacing filters regularly is really important. And here I'll talk a little bit more about understanding how air pure, how to evaluate air purifiers uh, performance. Unfortunately, in the US market, there is no standardization and there is no unified regulations that um, ask air purifier manufacturers how to communicate their performance. So it's a bit of a minefield and it often it 
gets very confusing for consumers. And more and more consumers are starting to understand and looking at other markets where they do have you know, regulated standards on how, how to evaluate air, air purifier. And one of the industry standards that is commonly applied in a lot of different markets is the so-called clean air delivery rate, which is often abbreviated as CADR. So CADR essentially is the, we believe is the truly sort of objective and unbiased measurement on how well an air purifier is performing. So the higher the CADR, it just means it has a higher airflow and better performance. And CADR is essentially broken down by calculating and looking at two main parts of that delivers your air cleaning performance. First of all is the so-called filtration efficiency, which is looking at how effective is your filter at removing pollutants. When Pollutants, when the dirty air passes through the filter once, how much pollutant is the filter removing? But then it also accounts for a really important part, which is airflow. So why is airflow important? Because a device can only truly clean the air in the room if it can have the power to suck in as much dirty air as possible and push out as much cleaner as possible and keep the circulation going and really moving high volumes of air through the air purifier is the only way to reduce pollution level indoors. And this is how it calculates and come, come to the um, metric of CADR. Additionally, sometimes you will also see uh, a so-called removal rate. A removal rate is a little different from filtration efficiency because it's actually evaluating the percentage of pollutants that is removed in a specific room size after a certain amount of time. Filtration efficiency is really looking at dirty air passing through the filter once, so it's not really all encompassing uh, and it's not truly accurate as to how air, you know, performs or, or, re, you know, or acts or behaves in a room, but you know, CADR and removal rate are factored much more realistically and reflect much more realistically how air is in a consumer's home. So a higher CADR also means that you will have a higher removal rate because within that 30 minute, 60 minute time, you're moving a lot of the dirty air through the air purifier more frequently, hence removing pollutants. And like I said, why is airflow important? Because our air is constantly being bombarded with pollutants. So it's really important that the air exchange that this air purifier can drive is frequent enough so that it's constantly cleaning it to maintain the cleanliness of the air. So airflow is an important metrics that we fundamentally believe as part of the air uh, purifier's performance. So that's why CADR is one of the, the better uh, metric to evaluate an air purifier. And when it comes to room size, this is another area that is often confusing or could be misleading for any shopper looking for an air purifier. Um, room size is kind of not a static value because it is dependent uh, in relation to the air exchange, which is the ACH. So air exchange per hours means how much you know, volume of air are you cleaning within a specific duration of time. And based on that, it, you can then calculate what is the suitable room size. So when you're considering an air purifier, it's really important to know, you know, what is the room size it's capable of cleaning in relation to how frequently it's also cleaning the air. So that is why uh, a clean room size can sometimes vary across the market. And when an air purifier is actually claiming a higher room size, it does not necessarily mean it is better performing. All it's telling you is that it is, clean, it is cleaning a really large room size, but it's really only exchanging the air of that room once every hour or less so. So we, um, you know, we fundamentally recommend always recommend room sizes um, at the 4.8 ACH, which means it takes about 12 and a half minutes to clean the air because that frequency of air cleaning is essentially how you can ensure the, the, room, uh, the air in the room can remain um, free from pollutants. And based on that, you, know, you can see that, that the space sizes will vary. And you know the AHAM, which I'll talk a little bit more about this third party uh, verification program also recommends that 4.8 air exchange is sort of the ideal frequency of um, air turnover within, you know, by the purifier to clean air. So when an air purifier is recommending 
um, the suitable coverage for a room, it then that is the size you should consider. And especially for asthma and allergy sufferers, the frequency of cleaning will be very important for them because you're hypersensitive to allergens. So, you know, these are kind of technical, it gets a little confusing. So what are some of the easy tips um, that you can recommend to a patient to look for when they're choosing the air purifier? First and foremost, because, um, you know, performance is so important to really truly alleviate these symptoms um, uh, for your patient. One of the recommended program and one program that we participate in is the AHEM Verify program. AHEM is the Association of Home Appliance Manufacturer. It is one of the largest association in the U.S., and it has established and developed with their, you know, all of their expertise, a standard testing protocol of how air purifiers should test against. And then that means that everyone is sort of using a standard way to test their products and also using a more standardized way to claim their performance. So, um, you know, manufacturers or air purifiers that participate in the AirHam Verified program will basically send their devices to a third-party lab to be tested to that test protocol. And based on those results, make a claim of how what, what they perform. And they will send for AHAM for verification and get the seal of sort of approval with their performance in there. So a really easy way is to see whether or not any air purifiers have this little AHAM verified logo, uh, or if they claim to be AHAM verified, and then you will also be able to see the seal of what their CADR is. And on the AHAM verified seal, it also recommends the room size based on uh, the 4.8 air exchange. And because um, it and clean, you know, the optimal way to optimal way to ensure your air purifier's performance is to leave it on at all time. It is also important to now consider uh, energy efficiency, just like other you know major appliances. So Energy Star is always a good framework um, to look at air purifiers are Energy Star rated, and most significantly this year, Energy the EPA's Energy Star program has started including air purifiers as part of their most efficient program because they understand that more and more Americans are using air purifiers. And oftentimes you're having more than one air purifiers in your home. So they've now actually have a more stringent standard to say that certain air purifiers that meet the standard will qualify as the most efficient uh, program, which is similar to fridges or dishwashers, like some of the major home appliances that you may be familiar with. And for some, um, for the US, we also have to meet uh, California Resource Board's ozone emission limit. Uh, and, and some manufacturers may also choose to take an approach that is even stricter than the California Resource Board and participate in the zero ozone verification by uh, the Intertech Lab. And um, if you're looking to recommend an air purifier to a patient, especially to improve their sleep, the noise level will also be very important to consider for those that are especially light sleepers. You know, noise is a very complicated medium and it is, you know, can be kind of a subjective experience. So even though decibel levels are the most commonly marketed product spec, it does not, it is not truly all encompassing, um, which is why more and more certification bodies such as QuietMark have emerged to really work with companies to prioritize noise reduction. And what an organization like QuietMark does is they are evaluating home appliances and products, looking at the full sort of quality of the sound. So their testing is looking not only at decibel levels, they are also looking at the tonality of the noise and also the frequency and the pitches of an appliance's noise. So sometimes, you know, you, you may be very sensitive to sort of like the very like humming static noise coming from uh, your, your TV or like an older TV or your dishwasher. Those are all different factors of noise that don't exactly get reflected in the decibel level. That's why, you know, having a third party certification on the the holistic experience of noise can be also very helpful. So any products that is QuietMark certified is also really helpful um, to look at. And hopefully we'll see more and more of the, these type of certification bodies in the US. So a quick summary um, on how to help your patient or yourself select an air purifier. Uh, first and foremost, 
our recommendation is always look at the clean air delivery rate and look at a high clean air delivery rate. The higher the clean air delivery rate number means the faster it'll be able to clean the air. So especially when it comes to asthma and allergy sufferer, that is something good for them to look for. Secondly, when they are deciding on what what size of an air purifier should I look for? Like how, it depends on the room they want to place the air purifier. So when you're looking at the room coverage, they should need to be sure and look at whether or not the manufacturing uh, manufacturer is transparently telling them how often is the ACH or the air exchange per hour. Just by providing a room size is not, um, is not enough to really speak to the performance of the air purifier. You want to know how fast it can clean that certain room size. So a ACH is really important for you to sort of educate your patient to look at if you're deciding between like a living room and a bedroom because a small air purifier will just take a much longer time to clean the air on a larger room. And what you can also do for those that are truly, really sensitive, often you can recommend them you know, having a product that is recommended for an even higher room size with a higher ACH because it just means it's it's cleaning super fast. And then it will help relieve them of um, some of the discomfort. Uh, and then lastly, you know, you want the performance, you want the, the fast cleaning and air exchange, but it might be also good, especially for those that are looking to improve their sleep, look at different sort of uh, new functionalities such as night modes or whether or not you can dim the light and also the noise level. So more and more air purifiers out in the market now have functionalities that allow you to dim the lights because nobody really likes that little you know, dot of LED diodes or shining in their bedroom at night. So that's something good to know, uh, uh, look for. And then also something that, you know, they truly won't mind having it close to them in their bedroom, humming along and won't be disruptive. So these are other factors that we recommend looking at for your patients. Um, and then, you know, just the final sort of tips um, beyond air purifiers on how to improve the air quality in your home. Uh, first of all, if you are suffering from, you know, different allergy symptoms, you may want to first identify and eliminate the pollutant source. Uh, it could be that there is excess moisture in your uh, environment causing mold spores, uh, you know, and so looking at different elements and sources is definitely one of the first step. And also, if you are in an area of high traffic area or an area that often uh, suffers from wildfires, um, really look to improve the entry point of pollutants. So you, you know, do a um, more heavy duty window sealing, look at your HVAC cracks to make sure that you don't really give that much opportunity for pollutants to enter your space. And then you also always want to look at different ways to improve the ventilation of the airflow, uh, airflow in your home. Um, for those that are hypersensitive, we, you know, it is always good to also maybe invest in a smart air quality monitor device or a smart device um, that can basically monitor the air quality inside your home and sometimes even outside because if the outside pollen, you know, um, index is sort of uh, increasing, they can then proactively and preventively sort of set, you know, different strategies in their home and, and protect themselves ahead of time. Uh, and obviously, you know, we always recommend looking to invest in a high quality air purifier with the appropriate CADR for the space that you want and also your specific health concern. Uh, and another good tip is you'll also see more and more air purifiers now, uh, you know, offering the auto mode, which means that this this air purifier will have a sensor. It can basically detect the pollution level in your home and based on the pollution level, self-adjust the fan speed to quickly clean your room. Uh, and then last but not least, you know, always, you know, reminding your patients to, you know, regularly change the HVAC filter because, you know, as the filter clogs up, it can actually then backfire and bring in more airborne pollutants into your indoor airspace and also change the filter in your air purifier to ensure optimal performance. So, you know, most of the manufacturer will provide a recommended replacement cycle. However, if you do live in a high polluted area or if you have sort of like pets, it is you may want to consider or advise them to even uh, change the filters more frequently to always ensure um, there is no lag in um, their air purifiers performance or HVAC as well. And that's it for today's webinar. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, and then now I'm open for questions. Thank you, Odile, wonderful information. And I think this is one of those things that people really underestimate is indoor air quality. 
Um, people think that we worry about outdoor air quality with diesel exhaust and wildfire smoke and things like that. But I don't think people realize how polluted our indoor air could be. So um, thank you for bringing that up and, and helping people learn a little bit more about that. Um, one thing I noticed also for those of you that might have joined us a few minutes late, we went over some stats at the beginning that there are 50 million Americans that have allergies. And um, I'm right along there with you. If any of you are out there sniffling and sneezing and wheezing, um, I'm right there with you. And um, one thing to keep in mind is right now we're talking about spring allergies. And for those of you that are suffering, uh, it's trees, um, the tree pollen. Uh, but we don't get much of a break sometimes in summer. For those of you that are allergic to grass pollen, that can add more fun to your life. And then uh, once again in the fall, when we have ragweed and pickweed and thistle and, and some of those. So um, keeping that indoor air quality um, clean, as clean as we can is really important. So thank you, Odile, for all of that and um, for your information about that. Um, I did notice in the chat, we had some people talking about air purifiers and that their local health department gives air purifiers to people that are in asthma programs. So Odile, do you know, um, have you had any information or collaborated with uh, any asthma home visit programs or anything like that? Uh, we, have, uh, we have collaborated over the years with different organizations. I think most recently we are working and in touch with, I think, the Department of Health in Utah for some programs um, okay. to participate, yes. So we, we definitely do look for different you know, uh, local and regional organizations. And, and especially because indoor air quality has now received like heightened awareness, we have heard um, more and more sort of different uh, education institution as well, like researchers looking uh, to do research on adding air purifiers to the indoor home. So we're always open to also partner with different research group. I think cook, oh, uh, you know, the, the gas burning stovetop is like, was like mm -hmm. top of, you know, top of the headlines a few weeks ago. And I know that, yes. you know, um, I know out in UC Berkeley, they're looking to do a large scale study on that. Right, right. And uh, once again, an example of something else that can really cause problems with the indoor air quality, if mm -hmm. people happen to be uh, sensitive to that particular mm -hmm. problem. So um, this might be something for those of you on the line with us that um, check with your local health departments and see if they have an asthma home visit program. And if this is something that they are able to help out with any of the people in your area with an air purifier. Um, another option is uh, some of you may know about the Green and Healthy Homes Initiative that goes by the acronym GHHI. And they also address a lot of this, the indoor air quality, and they do work with some asthma programs and they're able to provide the air purifiers um, as well as HEPA vacuums and some other things. So um, for those of you listening today that need a little bit of help with maybe um, students, I know we have some school nurses on the line, um, check with your health department or Green and Healthy Homes and see if that might be um, something in your area that you can tap into. Um, we have a question and they ask, can you address the efficiency of carbon filters for VOCs? Oh, yes. So this is important. So VOC can be absorbed with carbon material, uh, but how a filter's carbon is designed into the filter is, is it, it differs. Um, just looking at the carbon weight itself is not always sufficient. It really is about the quality of the carbon material you're, you know, the, the manufacturer is selecting and all. So how it's designed with in conjunction with the pleading and all the detail like filter design. So carbon, yes, is known as a material that can absorb VOC effectively, but how well it does it will also depend on the manufacturer's sort of design decisions. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. Um, we have another, we actually have a question here in the chat that says, as a school nurse, I have seen, um, this is from Sandra, I have seen so many uh, kids with asthma that are elementary age. Does the EPA work to train school engineers to design healthier buildings and supply school districts with electric school buses? Um, I can't speak for the EPA uh, specifically and maybe their guidelines and long-term investments. I do know that uh, we had work 
and, and have, you know, worked pretty closely with different school boards during the COVID period when schools were looking to reopen. And one of the requirements for school reopening was to add air purifiers into the classroom, but then evaluating the right air purifier for an education setting was also pretty complicated because noise level impacts a child's ability to learn in the classroom. So we had work uh, and had followed sort of the, um, the Harvard Public Health um, School at providing different sort of requirements to look at. Um, but in terms of the EPA's recommendation, I'm not quite sure how much they're investing or investigating for retrofitting new um, right. retrofitting existing buildings, yeah. Right, makes sense because we have a lot of older schools here in America, yes. we have brand new buildings. And so um, it can be, be very hard. I know the EPA does have um, an indoor air quality tools for schools action kit. Yes. Um, there's an app with that. And so there's some um, helps that can be for some of those school nurses. And the second part of that, um, when she talked about, oh, there it is, um, electric school buses. Uh, one thing that some of you on the line with us might want to check is with your in, um, Department of Environmental Quality. So your DEQ at your state level, I think all of the states are different. Um, I'm here in Utah and Salt Lake City by all the beautiful ski resorts. And I know that one thing that they have done is with, I believe it was the Volkswagen settlement. Um, they used that money to get electric buses here in Utah and they've done it by school district. Uh, another thing is um, Utah has also used some of the COVID funding from the federal government to be able to provide air purifiers for some classrooms. So um, for those of you on the line, check with your health departments, check with your DEQ and, and see what's available as far as funding for your areas that might help you out. Um, we have another question that you, in the chat. It says, what about air filters that include UV lights? Oh, okay, yes. So this is uh, definitely something that really emerged during the COVID, obviously with a lot of the fear around bacteria and viruses. Um, you know, I, in, in theory, uh, none of, you know, blue or none of our, of air purifiers use UV light, but UVC light in theory is dangerous when exposed to the eyes and to the skin. So the only way to ensure it can work in an air purifier setting is that we, it has to be designed to be properly enclosed within the air purifier so that, you know, uh, the users doesn't accidentally get exposed to it. The, the caveat is uh, from all of the studies that we have that you see on, for UVC light is that in order for the UVC light to effectively kill bacteria and germs. The bacteria and germs have to be exposed under the UVC light for I think over like 10 to 15 seconds at least. Um, and what happens in an air purifier is that when an air purifier is you know, sucking in the dirty air and then pushing it out through the device, that, that circulation is happening really fast. So when that is happening, you may not actually have the bacteria and viruses exposed to the UVC light long enough to truly kill it, or you know, in the more technical term, deactivate it. So it is not super clear to us whether or not UVC air purifiers really work in the context when it's functioning as you know, as in the real life settings. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you know the science behind this because I'm more, I work on the public health end. So um, one of the things that we also had in the chat was um, someone was asking about, oh, let me just go right back up. Uh, many of our school buses are not air conditioned. Um, the children with asthma have no access to their inhalers on the bus. Um, please advocate for states to pass clean trucks and buses. Um, one thing, and Chris, I don't know if you can grab the um, link for me, but here at Allergy and Asthma Network, every May, we sponsor Allergy and Asthma Day on Capitol Hill. That's always on World Asthma Day. And so this year, I believe it's May 3rd. I think it's May 3rd. Um, you can attend virtually. You can meet with your representatives and talk about some of these issues. And uh, these representatives are, are fabulous, but they don't know the background and all of the information in every area for their constituents. So please let your voice be known. Um, this is a free event. Chris, if you have time to um, put that link in there, uh, people can register, you can attend in person or you can uh, just attend virtually. But yes, let's let our representatives know about some of the uh, issues that are really important to us. 
So thank you. Thank you for that uh, comment here in the chat. We also have, um, oh, one thing that we were um, talking about in one of the chats earlier is um, one of the most important things is when we're talking about indoor air quality, it's important not to cover up the poor air quality. When you walk into a room and it smells dusty or musty or a little bit stinky, um, this was especially a problem at the beginning of COVID when I worked at a health department and came into work one day and they had a fogger and they were spraying the entire building with the disinfectant. Well, for me, for asthma, that's an asthma trigger. And, and we know that the EPA, and this has been part of your presentation as well, making sure that you're improving that indoor air quality, not covering it up, but actually improving it and purifying it. So, Odile, I don't know if you can speak any uh, more to that. Um, I I def yes, definitely the best way to improve the air quality is to remove things from the air, not adding in anything. So uh, like you mentioned, if, if you're spraying things just to purely, you know, a cosmetically mask a smell or so, it won't, it, it, it could backfire actually. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And we have someone in the chat that posted they are um, with Olin College for an air quality monitoring and HEPA purifier pilot in Roxbury, um, Boston. So, Odile, we can probably coordinate the two of you if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, coordinate on that, because really everything that you're presenting today, research, this is really helpful to know what's going on and and uh, behind the scenes, so thank you for that. Yes, yes, we're always uh, we're always eager to connect with also the research experts as well. Okay, let me just scan and see if we have some other questions in here um, for you. One, oh, we got a long chat. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, oh, someone's talking about uh, cockroach droppings that can also cause problems. Absolutely. Um, that's another thing that we want to watch for in addition to all sorts of, uh, some of the things the school use that have, uh, the, the little wax candles that melt and different things like that to try to make their classroom smell good. But you're right. Let's, let's take things out of the air and, and not add it, anything into it. Um, so, oh, Odile, another question I wanted to ask you about, and you talked about the importance of making sure that you have an air purifier that. Um, you're just not looking for the decibel, but you're looking for other um, things that can make noise as well. And I know that I was chatting with my, uh, texting my adult son that has this apartment and lives somewhere else. And he said there's a high pitch sound that comes from his air purifier. Now I'm a little <clears throat> older and sometimes when we're older, <laughs> we can't hear these high pitch sounds, but have you noticed, is that something um, at Blue Air that you've tried to watch for, make sure that you don't have any other um, noises that can be interfering with sleep? Yes, yes. I think the, you know, when we say we're dedicated to finding the best air purification solution, it's, you know, first and foremost, obviously the you know, the performance, the, you know, cleaning performance, the speed of cleaning is the priority, but then also a well-rounded and high quality product is looking at all the different factors that can impact a user but, or an owner when they have the device at home. So uh, we work very hard to design our products to reduce the, the noise level, even at the highest fan speed. And that's not you know, I can't speak to the details of the engineering uh, because that's where our R&D teams, you know, brilliance come into play. But that is something that is very hard to do. And that's what, you know, we consistently strive for to do, study different ways of designing the motor, adding noise shields, looking at how an, another um, interesting fact is more and more, I think over a quarter of air purifier owners now like to leave their air purifiers on the auto mode. So what happens with the auto mode is if it detects like the pollution level creeping up, it it will adjust the fan speed up. But if you you don't design your sound level to smoothly transition, what could happen is the sudden very abrupt change in the noise level that then can you know, lead to high frequency or pitching sound that is kind of disturbing in your home. And it becomes a, another source of discomfort. So you may be clearing your air, but now you may have, you know, slightly discomfort or intrusion from the noise. So sort of the gradation of the transition of fan speed and how that plays into the design of the noise level is also something uh, to look for. So it's, it is hard 
um, you know, to really experience it, especially if you're looking at the products online. But if there are, you know, retail stores like uh, Target or Best Buy near you, there are they often tend to carry different air purifiers, and it's a good place to sort of ask questions or even see the products in person if they're available on display. Mm -hmm. Right. Great. Oh, good thinking. Yes. Yeah, kind of uh, some people are a little bit more hands on and want to see what's there. So that's thank you for that suggestion. Another thing that you talked about is really with the air purifiers, um, not disturbing sleep. And we know that um, poor sleep, especially for all of you school nurses on the line, um, mm -hmm. we know how that can affect the students and, and adults. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think we can all be a little bit cranky if we don't get enough sleep at night or if we're woken up frequently during the night. And, and I know that's one of the things that you addressed. Is there um, anything more that you want to talk about, about how poor sleep, how that can correlate to problems in schools and, and work and just general life? I think, yes. I think poor sleep is, I, I, I definitely think, sleep itself as a part of the quality of life is becoming much more talked about in you know the the public uh, mindset and you hear a lot more about different sleep aid products for anything from supplements to you know wake up lights to white noise machine so i definitely think more and more people are starting to understand how poor sleep can really impact your lifestyle and the quality of life but one of the most immediate things because majority, as we've seen in the survey, majority of people that are suffering from sleep is actually stemming from allergy and asthma conditions. So, you know, talking a little bit more, being mindful and aware that air quality is something that you cannot, you don't see with your eyes could be the trigger of poor sleep is something um, hopefully you'll be able to take away from today's webinar and, you know, um, speak to your patients or also your students, parents. Thank you. I'm so glad you brought that up because um, as a certified asthma educator, I used to run an asthma home visit program. And that's one of the things that we talk about. You know, spring is here. I would love to open my windows, but I know opening the windows to my bedroom, the pollen's going to come in along with that nice breeze. And so, um, as you mentioned, being really careful about indoor air quality and, and keeping things out when we can and then purifying the air that's there when we can, because you're right, all of that's unseen and it will cause a lot of disruption in our sleep. Um, oh, do, uh, sorry, I feel like I just cut you off. Was there something else you were going to say? No, no, yeah. And then I think for those, if you also, um, more, there are more and more sort of very affordable air quality monitoring devices that you can find online. Um, so it could be also something else to add into your room. Most of the more and more air purifiers now will have a sensor built in to the air purifier, but how, what the range of pollutants a sensor can detect may vary. So uh, some of the more advanced ones will detect really fine particles all the way up to like large uh, particle sizes, such as pollen. Um, but you may want to just have a separate air quality monitor in the home and also a download you know, an app that can track a, a wide range of air quality indexes in your um, the, the external environment. And then that then helps you proactively kind of uh, take approaches to set up air purifiers or close the windows ahead of time and all of that, yeah. That's a, a great idea. And I know there are apps and different websites out there where you can check the pollen count in your area as well as um, ozone levels in the summer, some of that PM 2.5. So, so mm -hmm. good reminder, yes, thank you. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to add before we close? No, just thank you so much uh, for all of your questions. And I'm really hoping uh, you found the webinar today useful. Uh, and hopefully you'll be able to, you know, uh, learn a little bit something new on air purifiers and air purification in general uh, today and help sp spread the word to bring clean air for everyone. Thank you. Yes, this has been very informative, even for me, for as long as I've, I've been around and working with homes. So thank you. And for those of you that are on the line, um, we will have a survey that goes out to you afterwards. I know everybody gets tired of surveys. Um, I do look at each and every comment that, that you put in there, and that helps me guide what I do for the next webinars for the following months. So if you have suggestions or ideas, please put that in there. And I do look at those. So um Fill that out. And then, Odile, if you'll just go forward one more slide, if it will advance. Maybe not. Maybe it's being cranky. Yeah. And, and go one more. Let's one see. More. Um, we just want to let you know we will be having, there we go. 
<laughs> we will have a, a webinar again next week, and this is major shift in climate cycles, how that can be a benefit to allergy and asthma sufferers in the U.S. Um, feel free to sign up for that, and we will see you all next month. Thank you, Odile, again for Thank everything you, that you've helped us with. Um, this is yeah, this is Andrea Jensen for the staff at Allergy and Asthma Network. Join us as we work every day to breathe better together. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.